So pathfinding. Pathfinding is something that's fairly easy to get a hold of and replicate once you understand the basic concept of pathfinding. And uh, it's something that's really cool to add to any dungeon crawler or top-down shooter type of games. Um, it really improves the gameplay and just makes it makes the whole game feel more alive. So the purpose of this tutorial is to show you an easy and efficient way of doing that, which is this. Uh, essentially each node or each object, um, you can see the little circles there, they're pointing to the next node that will complete the path to going from that destination to our player. Um, and that gets calculated every five frames and it's, uh, it's pretty cool to just play around and look at this and later on I'll show you how um, we could add enemies here and make them utilize this pathfinding. Um, cool. So what is pathfinding, right? Um, so here I have a little grid drawn. Uh, essentially it's here. Uh, we are here and we want to get to our destination X, but we want to get there in the most efficient way possible. So currently we could do this, we could go here, or we could go here, um, right here. All those are very efficient ways of getting there, as opposed to, say, going all the way around here or going the way around here. Um, and pathfinding is essentially uh, getting rid of these type of paths or the most least efficient type of paths and only focusing on the most efficient path. Right? It's, it's basically trimming down the paths available to only having your most efficient path be the viable path. Um, and we also want it to be where, you know, if there's an obstacle here, then this is no longer a valid path and this is no longer a valid path. We want to go here. And in this case, this would be the only uh, valid path and the only, you know, most efficient path. We wouldn't want to go here because that's an extra, that's an extra node that we have to go and that would add to our total cost. Um, so how do we do this? How, how do we do this in Game Maker? Uh, so what what I do here is I create a node object, uh, and here we'll get to this later. But what you really need to implement now is the create and destroy. Um, and the create, all we do is create an adjacent node list, uh, which just holds all of our adjacent nodes uh, and our parent node as well as the node weight and the path weight. So what do those mean, right? Say this is our current node. We don't have any way of knowing what its adjacent nodes are. And if we don't know its adjacent nodes, we can't calculate how to get from this node to any other node. Um, so the adjacent nodes here, or in our use case, uh, would be the top and bottom and the left and right nodes. These would be the nodes within our list and these are gonna be the nodes we use to calculate the path. And the parent node is essentially once we already have the path calculated. So say the path would be from here to here. Uh, the parent node for this node at the bottom would be the center node and the parent node for the center node would be this top node. So it, it's just pointing towards our our next node in the path. Um, now the node weight and the path weight, those are gonna make sense later, but the node weight is the cost of going to that node and the path weight, it's the total weight, including that node and pointing towards the parent node. So we set that in the node and then on the destroy, we we'll want to destroy the adjacent node because that is a DS list. Now to the pathfinding object, this is basically where everything is done and it might look a bit intimidating, but it's really um, just my crude imp implementation of a lot of things and it's not that, uh, not that complicated really. So to start off, we set the player to the OBJ player. Uh, we'll use this later on and it, it, we just set it here to be able to change it to any other object if we need to, right? So first we want to create a grid of nodes. So here we have the y equal to zero. And if 
if the y times 64 and then plus 32 is less than the room height, then we increase the y. Uh, and same thing for x, if 32 plus x times 64 is less than room width, uh, we increase x. Um, and so what's, what this will do is uh, generate those those nodes in a grid inside of our whole room. Um, you could adjust this to have it create nodes only within certain sections of your room or you know adjust it to create nodes um, more efficiently. But for this case, we just create it across the whole room with an equal distance across from each other and uh, that's good enough for what we need to do. So the node grid of X and Y is uh, created at 32 X times 64, 32 Y times 64 and OBJ node um, with the depth of zero. So we get the grid height and grid width because we'll use this a couple times and it's just easier to calculate it once. Now we want to assign its adjacent nodes and that's what this section does. So we do the same for loops for above, essentially we just do grid width and grid height instead and get the node, which is equal to the node grid at X and Y. And now we wanna calculate the adjacent nodes of that. So we have all our nodes within a grid or within a 2D array. Um, and we wanna calculate the above elements and the or the sideways elements, the ones on the left and right. Uh, and that's what we do here. If X minus one is greater than or equal to zero, then it's within our grid or our 2D array. And if the node grid is uh, at X minus one and uh, Y not equal to pointer null, then we add that. We actually don't need this for this case. Um, I poured this over from a different project, but um, yeah, it, it's 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 sufficient to just have it be this, and that would calculate our uh, or that that would add the adjacent node without any problems there. So so we do the same here for x plus one, except that we also calculate that x plus one is less than the grid width, or else we will get a segmentation fault type of error. Um, and the same thing for y. Uh, you can just copy this over and it, it just it adds the nodes to side and uh, top and bottom of it. Um, and that's it for the create. Not really that complicated. Just create the grid and assign the nodes. Now we start our path binding. Right. So here's where all the magic happens. So the node Q, that, that just holds uh, which node we're about to calculate. So first off, we reset the nodes to its initial state. So we want to get the node for X and Y and set the pathway equal to negative one and its parent node equal to null again. So now we, find a, we want to find the nearest node. So here's where we use player again. So the node nearest to the player will be the node that is used to start off the calculations um, because we want to find we want to calculate to the node that's nearest to the player, not necessarily to the player, since we have this whole node grid. And once we're close enough to the player to where we don't need to calculate, or we don't need to follow the path anymore, then our enemies would start just going straight towards the player rather than using the pathfinding to follow along. So we set the path weight of the nearest node to zero, and we add that to our queue, right? So now we have this while loop. Um, so this will keep occurring as long as there is a queue or there's a node within the queue. We get our current node, which is the first one or the, the node that is queued up in our list. And we also delete that from the queue. Um, so with our current node, we get the list size of its adjacent nodes and it'll loop through all those JSON nodes here. So the adjacent node is equal to the DS list find value of the current node adjacent node i. 
Now, if the adjacent node path weight is equal to negative one, that means that that adjacent node hasn't been used or it hasn't calculated the path from its, from its position to the destination. So we need to calculate, or we need to add it to the queue and do this whole calculation for it um, regardless. But then we also have a case where the path weight plus the current node weight, right? So the weight that, um, or the path weight that the node would have if that adjacent node was added to it, if that is less than its current path weight, then we calculate the path weight again. Um, or we, we calculate the, the, the path for that adjacent node again, because we found a more efficient path of getting from the adjacent node to our destination. And so our adjacent node path weight is equal to current node dot path weight plus current node dot weight. And our adjacent node dot parent node is equal to the current node. So it'll point towards the current node. And then we just add that adjacent node to the queue again, and we repeat. For this node, just to have more visibility, uh, I draw a circle and I also draw a line pointing from its position to the parent. And to avoid the walls, what we do is just increase the node weight to a really high number because we want that node at that position where the wall is to never be considered for a valid path. So real quickly for the player, the x and y is just at the mouse x mouse y and that's all there is to it it's just regular object and the wall the obj wall doesn't have anything it's just for collision but now we want to add enemies because that's the whole point of really implementing pathfinding um, so to do that i already have this enemy created so uh, to start off we just set the speed to a random to a random speed um, so it can be moving and it's really easy to to do this. So player equals obj player um, point distance from the x and y to the player. So if it's if it's greater than forty, and we do need to find the path, so we can't count on it being close enough to just go directly towards it. Um, then we need to find its nearest node, which would be pointing towards the most viable path. The enemy is going to be moving towards the most nearest nodes parent node and the direction will be um that's just how we make it fall so point direction x y to player dot x player dot y and same thing for here we just draw a circle so you can see here they're completely avoiding the walls which are also that, that's just a, an object that randomly generates them across the room not really much to it um, and it's it's pretty it's pretty fun to just play around and see them like do this and once you take the um the lines off uh, where where it's pointing towards the most efficient path it's uh it's pretty seamless this is a really easy way and really efficient way uh to compute these pathfinding um because you only need to do it once Right, so each of these enemies aren't calculating the path, they're just following the most nearest nodes path. I also wanted to give a shout out to a game I'm working on right now called The Lost and the Wicked. It uses this exact same pathfinding and you can wishlist it on Steam. Um, yeah, here's a bit of gameplay. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.